Good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about the reading skills. All of you know that the reading plays a very very important role when we are talking to somebody because the knowledge that you gain from reading, the knowledge and skills that you have gained from reading of a subject, of a topic, of newspaper or anything that would be reflected through your speech. And as we have already read and as we have already been talking of that communication is a very very important tool and for an effective communication that is in order to make your communication effective you need to take care of certain things. Now let us see what goes into the effective communication. There is first thing as you can see right there that listening, speaking, reading and writing. These are the four skills. We call them LSRW. That is listening, speaking, reading and writing. They are very very important tools in order to make you an effective communicator. So in order to communicate effectively you have to develop these critical thinking skills. Now these together that is LSRW they together form the critical thinking. So in order to present yourself in a better manner, in order to present yourself as good communicators you have to take care of listening, speaking, reading and writing skills. Let us begin. Today we are going to talk about the reading skills. In the previous lessons we have been talking about the communication process. We have also talked about the various aspects of communication. But now we are going to deal them separately and for that we are going to take up reading skills today. Let us begin. Read it, process it, use it. See, it is very important that how you take the information. Reading is the intake of information. Whatever you are gathering through reading, whatever information you are gathering through reading a good piece of article or a good piece of literature or a good poem or a good novel. So whatever you are reading, it is the intake of information that you are taking. And writing, it is the production of information. That is, when you read and then you, if you are asked to write down those things subsequently, so the output of it, that is, you are producing that information, that is your writing skill. So you need to take care that in order to write well, you need to read well. Now how does it take place? How should you read? What all things you should keep in mind while you are reading? That we are going to discuss today. And in this lecture we are going to take care or we are going to listen, we are going to discuss about your reading skills. How to make your reading an effective one. That is the main purpose of today's lecture. Children, we read basically for two purposes. As you can see, we read for pleasure and we read for information. Now, reading for pleasure may have various forms. You may read a newspaper. That is, all of us have a habit that some people read it for information and some people read it for pleasure. They, and for them, the sections are divided. You may take up a novel and you read it for pleasure. You may also read it for information. So there is no generalized definition as such that which type of reading you are taking for information or which type of reading you are taking for pleasure. But generally what we do is for information we are taking the newspapers for or some articles or we are taking some kind of thing to gain information as it is whenever you are reading it is giving you information but we categorize reading into these two categories that is reading for pleasure and reading for information reading for pleasure may be a leisure time activity wherein you can take out your book and 
and read it with the time whenever you find time you are not bound to do it but when you are reading for information there is a particular time frame given and you have to give the output supposedly a teacher has asked you to read a piece of a piece of literature or a article and you are asked to take down the notes of that and then speak about it so now here when you are reading it it is reading for information of course you are gaining pleasure out of that reading but you cannot take it for granted or you cannot keep it aside and uh, read it fine in the leisure time it is an activity that has been given to you or it is something that needs reserve so you will have to take care of certain things when you are reading such kind of things so the broad categories on which we can divide reading is one is for pleasure and another is for information that is reading for pleasure and reading for information let us move ahead there are another two ways of reading one is silent reading children and another is reading aloud reading aloud all of you must have had in your school days you had that you were asked to read the text aloud now reading aloud is a this is a difficult one because in it your attention is divided between what you are reading and what you are speaking so at both the poles your attention is divided and because you are thinking that is your pronunciation correct or not are you taking the intonations in the right manner you have to take care of certain things when you are reading aloud you have to take care of punctuation marks that is wherever it is a comma you have to give a pause wherever it is semicolon a greater pause and so on wherever it is a full stop a better pause and then start the new sentence so there are certain things that you take care when you are reading aloud you have also to take care of whether you are speaking it correctly or not whether you are able to bring out the message in the way it is conveyed by the author or not so certain things have to be taken care when you are reading aloud similarly there is reading for meaning reading for meaning is silent reading now when you are reading silently you are categorizing yourself or you are categorizing reading into basic two more parts that is intensive reading and extensive reading so today in the lecture we are going to talk about what is intensive reading and what is extensive reading i know these terms are a little new to you because you have not studied about it but just try and understand if there is something that you are not able to understand please ask me when the lecture when i have finished with the lecture so we begin with it this is just a outline of lecture that we are going to deal with today and it in it we are going to talk about the importance of reading then we are going to talk about the input and output in language reading reading as an important input and the two types of reading that we have already talked about that is intensive reading and extensive reading so in this lecture today we are going to focus on all these things let us start the importance of reading we cannot deny the importance of reading whether it is a newspaper that you are reading whether it is an article that you are reading or whether it is a motivational book that you are reading reading is a kind of input and if your input is good your output automatically would be a better one so now when you read take care that you read in a proper manner you read you take down notes children people have a habit of forgetting generally all of us you we cannot uh, remember whatever we have read but whenever you are reading something important please take a pen and paper along with you and just jot down the important things whatever you have read even if it is a small article even if you are reading for pleasure in that case also if you jot down the important words or if you jot down the important content of it you will remember it and when you speak about that article you will be able to refer to that so that will help you in presenting your ideas in a better manner in a better way and that is why we say the more the input the better the output so take care that when you 
are reading, you take down notes, you take down proper notes. Now reading could be very vast, it is a very vast activity. Some of us are voracious readers, some of us are not. But we need to develop that thing. Those who are voracious readers, they, it is very good that you read. But those who are not, who are not, who have not developed the habit of reading, please start up. It is never too late. Now it is a time when you have immense opportunities. Go to the library. Start with small storybooks. Children, stories have always been a source that encourages you to read more and more. In your childhood also, you must have heard about the stories and you remember those stories well. It, whether it is the Panchatantra stories, whether it is the Akbar Birbal stories or whether it is the fairy tales. You remember these things because you have read it and because it is interesting, you, read, you remember it more precisely, you remember it more clearly. So it is important that you know what you are reading and if you have not developed the habit of reading, develop it now. Go to the library, take a newspaper article daily and read it, take down the notes and slowly and gradually then move to good novels, fair. whatever be your taste, that is if you would like to read fiction, go for good authors. If you like to read motivational books, go for those books and just take down the information, whatever you are reading, discuss it. Because until and unless you don't discuss it, those ideas, they get buried in you and you, are, you forget them. So that is why we say, the more you read and the more you discuss, you will be able to remember it in the long run. A reader, a voracious reader, can be a good speaker as well, one who reads well will have a good knowledge about the subject and he will have that content. Remember children, we talked about content when we were talking about communication process. We said that content is very very important. You should not speak baseless. You should have some content, some substance in whatever you are speaking. So whenever you are speaking, you, if you refer to what you have read, you will be more confident and you will be able to present yourself and your ideas in a better manner. So do read. At least once a day, read one article. Or if you have missed out on certain days, please uh, go to you all have internet facility. So read it on the net and take out notes. It will help you become good speakers because you will These 
are the two types of reading that we are going to talk of that is intensive and extensive reading. Let us begin with intensive reading. Intensive reading is also said to be narrow reading. It is treated as an end in itself. It is a kind of reading that is used by teachers generally to teach children about the nuances of English language. The small things that one should take care in English language. So to inculcate the habit of reading or to encourage the students to read, intensive reading is done. In this, the students are given a piece of paper or a piece of art information that is brief. You may be given a one page article to read and then point out what you have read in that, what is the gist that you have gathered through that. You will not be reading more than two pages in intensive reading as it because we said that it is narrow. You are narrowing the scope. You are not reading extensively. You are reading intensively. That is you are being focused on that article. On that piece of information that has been given to you. So this kind of reading is generally done in the, is a generally a classroom based reading or it's generally done in the classroom. Let us read ahead. To read intensively is to concentrate effort on a short piece in order to learn the basic skills of the language. As we have already said or we have already been discussing to learn the basic skills of a language we read or we take, we take the help of intensive reading. It is generally done in order to involve the students and to encourage them to read. Generally, all of us have a habit that we take a really, uh, pro keep on prolonging. Okay, I'll read tomorrow. Okay, I'll read the other day. And that procrastination is not a good thing. So, in order to make the students understand the importance of reading, it is the intensive reading technique that is used and this helps the student develop the habit of reading. You may be, whenever we will be dealing in the tutorial classes, I will be giving you some newspaper articles, I will be giving you some poems and then we are going to talk about it. We are going to discuss the various aspects of English language through that. We are going to talk about it and this will help you develop your reading skills it will also help you develop your spoken skills how well you are able to present that information the information that you have read in your own way will also help you develop a good communicator and basically children as you can see you have been solving the papers in your 10th 12th standard also you get the piece of information to be read that is reading and comprehension section wherein you get a passage and you have to read that passage and solve the questions based on that passage. Now this is also intensive reading. It's an example of intensive reading. The goals of intensive reading, let us very quickly go through the goals of intensive reading. Number one, it is to improve your reading comprehension. To make you understand certain things about reading comprehension, what things you should take care of, how do you present the information and why you are solving the questions of reading and comprehension, what are the points you need to remember is the main aim of intensive reading. Secondly, it is a kind of reading that arouses your interest in text. You may be given the text of very famous authors or very famous uh, poets. So, in order to arouse an interest in reading, this technique of reading is used. And lastly, it helps you develop your ability to work independently. That is, when you 
you are given a piece of paper with the content or when you are given a newspaper article to read, you are working on it independently. Whatever you are reading and then you are understanding and then you are developing into your own words and speaking it out. So it is making you independent. It is giving importance to what you have read. So in order to help you read properly, in order to help you speak properly and in order to present your ideas properly, this technique that is intensive reading technique is used. Now let us move towards the extensive reading. Extensive reading, the name itself indicates that when you are reading extensively, like it is as an intensive reading, it is a it is an article that you are reading. Now that article could be of one, two, or maximum three pages. As we said that it is narrow. It is narrow reading. You do not read much. But here you are reading extensively. So as the name itself indicates the purpose that you have to gain information or you are doing a detailed reading of something that is extensive reading. It may be uh, reading for pleasure or it may also be reading technical, scientific or professional material. The goals of extensive reading are to form the habit of reading faster and be able to get the gist. That is the main content. What is there in that? So that you can present it effectively. To expose yourself more to the language. From intensive reading, you are getting the information, you are getting an exposure. But here, your exposure is not limited. You are getting immense opportunities to read. And to acquire more information through this reading. That is, in intensive reading, we were reading less. And so, the, our information was also narrow. But here, it is not narrow. For example, if you are writing a research paper, you have to read extensively. You have to refer to several authors, you have to refer to several other research papers and then make your research and then conclude your research. There, you would not use intensive reading technique. There, you would make use of extensive reading. There are certain techniques that are helpful in reading. We have talked about intensive and extensive reading. Now these techniques could be used in both. That is extensive as well as intensive reading. The first technique is skimming. Skimming, as you all know, we skim in order to gain the information, to get the gist of something. So skimming is a technique wherein you are just going through the main headlines and getting the gist of information. That technique is used as skimming. Now when you are reading the newspaper in the morning if you are coming to the university and you are in a hurry. So you will not go into the detailed reading. You will use this technique skimming. Wherein you just skim through and you get the information that is what you will read the headlines. Just the headlines you will not go into the detail of it and get the information and so you will be well equipped for the day. Okay, if somebody asks me what is the recent news or what is it that is going on these days, I should be able to tell. Even if you are not able to tell it in detail, but at least you are aware of. You are you know what to speak. Scanning. Scanning is a kind of reading wherein you are reading for a specific purpose. You have to scan through. You have to read it minutely. You have to go through all the details carefully. Then only scanning is helpful. That is, whatever you are reading, you are scanning through. For example, if you are, you have to search for a person's um, number in the directory, phone number in the directory, you cannot skim. You will have to scan because you will have to go through each and every page carefully so that the name is not missed out. 
So you have to make use of these two techniques depending upon the type of reading that you are doing. If you are reading for pleasure, uh, if you are in an urgency, if you have to gather information quickly and report, in that case you will use skimming technique wherein you read quickly and you get the gist of something or wherein you get the gist of that information that you have read and produce it. But if you have been given some kind of task that uh, needs great inputs, that is you have to read it very thoroughly. So when you are reading thoroughly, you will make use of scanning technique. That is, you will have to take care of all the details. You will be reading minutely and you will be taking down notes as per the demand of the article or the information that you are reading. So this is what we have taken and this is what we should take care when we are reading any text. Children, we should also know that what are the problems that occur or that result in slow reading. Number one, it is poor concentration as we have discussed that if you are not able to concentrate upon uh, something, you, the results would not be good. Now that poor concentration may be due to lack of interest. If you are not interested in what is being taught or the piece of information that you are given, you will not be able to focus on it. If you have a habit of daydreaming, most of us have a habit of daydreaming, that is even if we are present in the class or we are physically present but mentally absent, we are mentally somewhere else, we are into our dreamland. So when you are there, you will not be able to read properly and your reading would be slow because half the time you are daydreaming, you are dreaming about something else, you are thinking about something else. Then worrying about other problems, if you are worrying up too much, if you are not focused, your mind would be distracted. You would be, your mind would be running about here and there and you would be thinking about several other things. So in order to be focused, you need to take care that you channelize yourself and you focus yourself on the piece of information that is given. Howsoever important other work may be, Howsoever important other things may be, you should focus on whatever you are reading, wherever, whichever work you are doing, if you are concentrating on that work, if you are focused on that work, definitely you will be able to get good results. So children, that's all for today. I will just give a quick recap of what we read today. We read about reading, we read about the importance of reading and we also read that it is important for us to read. If we are reading regularly, we can emerge as good speakers. We can develop our communication skills in a better manner if we are reading. We also talked about intensive and extensive reading. Intensive reading is narrow reading. That is, it is an end in itself. So you are given a piece of information and you are being asked from that piece of information only. Extensive, as the name itself indicates, it is very vast kind of reading and it could be reading for pleasure also. So, and it could also information. We also talked about the different techniques of reading that is skimming and scanning. So skimming is to get the gist of something wherein you read, you read, don't, you do not read that thoroughly, you just read through and get the gist of information so that you can present it. Scanning, it is uh, reading when you are reading it very minutely, very thoroughly. Now that technique is scanning. Children, if there is any problem with that, please let me know. And please develop the habit of reading because it will help you in the long run. It will help you be better communicators. Thank you very much.